Wings of Redemption, a person that one could only hope was a character. He was someone who was given a second, a third, a fourth, and so on chance at a better life. But those had been squandered time after time by the insanity that are his habits. His downfall is a live event that as things seem to get better, they only get worse. When we last left him in 2019, he successfully raised enough money to get a weight loss surgery and was on a path at a healthier lifestyle. But his existence is the definition of old habits die hard. Since then, the two major differences in his life are that he has gained all that weight back and that he has gotten married. But he is also married to his online presence, and that presence is attached to the many trolls that follow him and that record every step, or rather every sniff of finger or every squeak of a chair. The relationship between Jordy and his trolls is a coin where both sides are equally weighted with unfavorable activity with each accusing the other of heinous actions. But the troll side is now backed by a source that claims the worst about Jordy is true. Enough so for many of you to believe a continuation video is necessary. And to that, I give you the continuation of Jordy's downfall. As a refresher to who Jordy is and what he has done, he was one of the first Call of Duty commentary channels on YouTube and helped establish the genre known as Let's Plays. But as it evolved, Jordy and his content did not. There was hardly any attempt or effort to put in to focus on new successful types of content. Only different projects with the same effort put in. Normally, these channels die out completely and are only remembered as relics and stand as plinths that as themselves once improved on a popular form of content are now that which is being improved upon. If we instead take these evolutions in content and reframe them as stepping stones, each one leading up to today's clickbait and bombastic titles and thumbnails, we will find Jordy's Let's Plays at the start of the steps and Jordy never climbing it. A large hindrance or massive change in how people viewed him came out in 2011 when he lost a 1v1 match in Call of Duty. But it wasn't so much his loss that had people talking about this event. It was his reaction. You know, like you, commentator showdown goes on. I knew that was a tough lobby to do well in, but I was there. Wings, did you spawn in? I'm, I broke my controller. You broke your controller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep fucking laughing, you fucking. Oh, Wings, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't fucking suck. This, as the years progressed, turned out to be a sort of pattern. Not so much with his outbursts, though those were present, but more so in his declining image. Friends tried to help Jordy both business-wise by getting them to try different forms of content, which was unsuccessful, or help him lose weight but unable to steer clear of a diet consisting of fast foods and other unhealthy ingestibles, he found success in his failure when he dedicated himself to live streaming and was wholly unfiltered with his emotional outburst and controversial comments. He not became, but rather was discovered to be the new age internet term lolcow, as him and others like him easily give reactions to any form of ridicule or criticism. These reactions are as consistent as a robot reacting to a stimulus. For some, it could be anxiety inducing to witness a person fall into the same self-pitying that has crippled their not just time on the internet, but also their life. To others, there is a comfort in viewing his mundane responses and delving into a culture that is truly his own. The man's name is Jordy Jordan. But at some point, viewers looked into documents that revealed the residence of Jordy's household and what they allegedly found was there was once a Richard Jordan living there. So trolls began to address him as Richard, which he vehemently combats. There's nobody in my family named Richard. I don't know where you guys get this from. Why do you guys keep saying Richard? Keep in mind, if you continue to say Richard, whether you're a sub or not, we're just going to get rid of you for 24 hours, right? So you've been. this is your warning right here. So after this, if you get kicked, it's your fault. Um, mods, please ban anybody that calls me Richard too. I don't even like that, so just go ahead and ban him. He is also referred to as Sam, 
Because one time on stream, his grandma in her age, most likely misremembering names, called him Sam and Jordy looked over. And so began people calling him Sam, which brings yet another name that will get a reaction out of him. At one point, he was drinking Pepsi on stream, but stated he does not enjoy that soft drink. So now, to his viewers, they refer to it as his drink of choice. Though even still, his true preferences are also memed on, like the Wendy's chili he consumes or the Yoohoo's he drinks. These stimuli by themselves become stale. So to get a larger reaction from him, sometimes these are combined to make them more bothersome. Like someone might donate something like Richard the Pepsi drinking chili lover or Sucking Sam the vacuum part salesman as the profession of vacuum part salesman has also been endowed to him by the trolling community. Anyways, love you, Wingo. Stay yeet. And shout out Sean Ranklin, big ups Liquid Richard, and have a good day. From the Pepsi pimp to Samuel, Richard Samuel McCready III. The streams themselves are not what viewers flock to. That is reserved for the many channels that clip his wildest and also equally mundane moments, like the varying reasons he gives for bans. Ban that guy right there. Try, trying to make fun of my fucking KD. Fuck you, dude. You come do this shit. Ban Super Han. I'll ban him. Oh my god. Kim, Kim, mods, please shut this shit down. No, I don't want any fucking life advice. Time out anybody trying to give me life advice. I don't want it. Uh, he was banned yesterday for um, for basically asking for me to play Fortnite multiple times. There also exists a six minute long compilation of his chair squeaking created by the most popular channel of this category, Sean Ranklin, who was the first to find success in clipping his moments of not so much passiveness, but his aggression during a period in late 2017. Sean Ranklin, bringing in more viewers that Jordy's personal channel hadn't seen in a very long time, earned in the phrase within the trolling community, shout out Sean Ranklin. A rare sign of status given to those that the community collectively respects or knows the content will get Jordy's attention. Like Big Ups Liquid Richard, designed to promote Liquid Richard, a channel known for creating autotune music involving wings and others where Jordy's online career could have dwindled into ever more low count streams until it was not financially viable to stream, this renaissance of rage brought in viewers that revived his Twitch channel, but parallel to this growth was an increase in harassment that goes beyond doxing and beyond the online realm. It has gone as far as having the police raid his house after they received false reports from the worst of his trolls as seen from this clip from 2018. Things did eventually get better. He got on Lexapro, which is an antidepressant. This lowered his outburst significantly when he, alongside the drug, streamed single player games that allowed him to take a break from the constant trolling he experienced from multiplayer games. Even when getting into situations that once led to frustration, instead of screaming or creating easily clippable moments of his unadulterated rage, he had replaced his moments of frustration with a stretch or a sigh. <sighs> Jordy, within this period, set a goal to get a weight loss surgery done. However, due to his long history of failing to reach goals and what some consider to be a lack of discipline, there was little hope that he would be able to raise the tens of thousands of dollars to get this surgery done. But the larger worry was once that the funding goal was reached, he would take the money and run. To the surprise of many, he eventually got it done in Mexico. And while there is still some contention in allocation of funding, he was visibly losing weight. This time around, it was not his race-related outbursts that got the online community's attention, but rather that he was able to follow through on a commitment. This speaks on a wider range than his following of 200,000 Twitch followers or 400,000 or so YouTube subscribers. His influence goes far beyond that. Even PewDiePie, coming from the same community Jordy did in 2010, may know of Wings of Redemption. The same goes for Dr. Disrespect and many other creators of varying sizes. If you're in the gaming community or in this side of content creation in general, there is a fair chance that you know about Wings of Redemption. All this is to say that there is a large interest in this man. 
shown not only by my previous video that got 2 million views, or Frederick Knutson's video covering his story that has well over 8 million views. And with that established, we can give a continuation starting late 2019, after he successfully shed what he claims to be 140 pounds or so. Not only that, Knutson's video gave a sympathetic view towards Jordy, and in doing so helped shift the narrative against the trolling community. While they never truly received much support, showing the infighting and the overall instability of some communities that troll Jordy had the effect of these communities losing members and supporters. On the other side, this may have also encouraged equally unstable individuals just introduced to Jordy to dox the worst of his trolls which brought on even more infighting and instability. And in that chaos, Jordy was able to get a bit of control and some financial stability. I heard you say that you were making money off the troll channels. I am. What's is that's true? That is true. Any troll that's channel insane. you see with advertisement on it I, is paying me kickback. So, so you claim those videos and then you get the money. No, 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 no. They, they, I have, I have deals worked out with each one of them for different amounts. Get out. You have deals worked out with them, so they pay you for content. No, they pay me to not strike them. That's kind of blackmail-y. I don't have another word for it. Dude. I, I mean, it's not blackmail -y. It's like they're making money. You cut me a little piece of the money because you're using my content. Like all you're doing is re-editing my content. So like I have the power to like take your content down. But if you want to work out a deal where you pay me for like the rights to use my content. Uh-huh. I'm down to let your channel all stay right, up. At Jordy's peak in the early 2010s, he was earning an estimated 8,000 to 12,000 a month. Now, from a conversation with Woody's Gamertag, a content creator part of the podcast PKA, also known as Painkiller Already, a podcast Jordy was once part of before he was kicked out, we learned that those numbers are down to 3,000 to 4,000, with the largest piece of the pie coming from donations. But now, Jordy was being fed money through other routes like occasionally door dashing to make additional money. As for the payments from clip channels, whether it was monthly or a one-time payment, it was clear that he began to embrace his infamous status, at least in some capacity. Though that doesn't mean he still doesn't oppose it altogether. Whether he supports it or not, his blunders typically attract a large audience. Like when, in late 2019, Jordy showed his livestream a page on the automotive research and shopping website CarGurus where he looked at a 2017 Camaro available in his area. But what Jordy was unaware of was that in Car Guru's prompting Jordy to purchase the vehicle, it showed, on screen, his contact information. On the topic of vehicles, shortly after this blunder, he ended up purchasing a V4 Mustang and displayed the raw power of it to his livestream viewers. At this point, there was an air of success and improvement that was overtaking Jordy's recently depressive image, though there were a few notches in his path that brought on the all too familiar rage moments, as seen by this video posted November 7, 2019 by Sean Ranklin. The more significant aspect of this video is that this was the last video Sean Ranklin posted. Whether due to personal interest or decline of Jordy's rage moments, his absence spoke for itself. Though that's not to say that the documentation of Wings was hindered, but rather received less attention. There are still countless channels that uploaded almost parallel to the frequency that Jordy streamed, preserving events like this 46 minute long conversation with Frederick Knutson that gives us Jordy under a different light. Typically, we see Wings interacting with trolls either indirectly when addressing his chat or directly when he joins their discord and is unable to hold a genuine conversation due to the constant fodder of insults and other comments that typically have him join and maintain an aggressive stance. But with Knutson, we see a different side of Jordy, where a mutual respect is present and a neutral conversation can be held. Yeah, I have like, I have sort of the opposite relationship with food than you do, where like I, well, I guess it's kind of similar, where I, I won't eat until I feel like I've deserved it. Like if I've if I've worked enough today, like have I worked enough today to deserve food? And that's like that's its own problem. Yeah, like I'm I, I can't comprehend what you're putting down right now. It's like my brain. Yeah, no, like, exactly. Like yeah, yeah no, every, everyone has their own personal relationship with food and it 
people think that food is this very universal thing. And it's like, yeah, everyone eats, but not everyone eats or views food the same. You know, like like watching your video because I kind of skimmed through it because it's like two hours long, and I've lived. I, the, I don't blame you. I've lived through the. I've lived through everything in the video, so like. Yeah, you, yeah. You don't need a. You don't need yeah. a fucking recap. <laughs> but um, like I, I was really depressed at how fat I was in a lot of those scenes. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I like, like, like you don't. That, you don't realize was... how fat you are until you go back and look at like you at your worst. Mm. And like I look at myself, yeah, I'm like, it's... how did I even think I did, I was deserving of like another we person loving me at that weight? There are other moments where a more upbeat Jordy is captured, but those typically don't get as much attention. Take for example this short clip uploaded by Lummox, a hired hoblum. All right, Jordy, they want you to rage when I do it too. Okay, I got you. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> I'm gonna get five dollars of this, right? What the hell? <laughs> I gotta act and everything. You gotta, yeah. you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get them us up, bro. All right, Jordy, get ready. Come on. You ready for this? Any last words? Why the fuck you do that, Skate? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is a rare occasion where Jordy plays into the rage he is known for. These moments are few and far between, especially now with the bad news that kicked off 2020. Jordy's grandmother, known to the stream as Gangster Grandma, renowned for her ability to eat a raw onion, but more importantly because she cared much for Jordy and Jordy cared much for her. To him, she was very close to a second mother. That's why this news hit not only him, but the community very hard. When it was revealed that she had fallen ill as a mass on her lungs was found, and she was later diagnosed with three different types of cancer. An equally shocking discovery, though much less somber, was when in the following month, Jordy announced he was getting married. And like people are concerned about how fast I'm getting married. I mean, me and this girl have been like off and on for six years. And the reason we've been off and on is I kept pushing her away, mainly because of one simple reason. Like she's super religious, I'm not. Right? Like, religion's a big part of her life. And, um, I'm not so concerned about her being religious as if we had children, I wouldn't want them to be forced into religion. But, I recently decided I don't want kids. There's a good chance she can't have kids. And that took away all the, like, downsides of, like, hey, we probably should we probably won't work out long distance because like you want children i don't know if i want children i don't i don't think we'll agree with how to raise children so all that went out the window so like there's no reason not to date and at the same time it's like she's one of the few people in my life that's always been there for me like through all the other girls and hoes and shit like that she's been the universal constant so do i think i'm rushing a marriage no not really I think I'm getting married to the right person. Though he would not disclose the identity of his fiancée, bringing into question if she actually existed. To offer proof, Jordy showed the container for the ring on stream, but if his fiancée's existence did not come into question by the trolls, his faithfulness did, for reasons such as his previously active Plenty of Fish profile. As one of his most dedicated but also considered to be a disturbed troll, catfished him on the website and carried a conversation during the time Wings was supposedly in a committed relationship with his girlfriend now turned fiance. There was also that time, shortly after announcing his marriage, a website used to hire escorts auto-filled in his search bar. This meant very little, but it allowed trolls to speculate why Jordy may have visited the site. It could have been because the year prior, escorts were sent to his house by trolls and was curious to know the source. But the larger question was, what were Jordy's intentions in marrying this mysterious person? 
and that was seemingly answer to what appears to be rumors. As during an event, maybe a stream or private messages, he seemed to have given away key details like that she had previously fought cancer and is a registered nurse with insurance. With this information, a troll was able to find Jordy's fiancé's identity via his Facebook profile and was able to turn her family against him. Um, here's what actually happened. Wings claimed he was getting married and then someone did some research and found out that she, uh, she has cancer and she's about to have a cancer surgery this spring. Meanwhile, he just bought her a ring even though they, to they told him not to buy a ring. And uh, I guess she wants kids immediately whereas he doesn't want kids at all. And he claimed that she was a nurse who made, quote, bank. And now he was going to have expendable income and free health insurance. Um, and, uh, and, and <laughs> at no point do you see him like, oh, I love this person so much. We have such a deep connection. I want to spend the rest of my life with him. It's more like free health insurance. And uh, I'll have it's somebody. Like it's talk. financially advantageous. <laughs> the caveat to all this, I've later learned. The person who assembled this data and talked to the person's mom and this and that is Wings' parallel of uh, Boogie's biggest anti-fan. I don't know what to call him, hater or whatever. So, like, he just takes everything he knows and paints it in the worst possible light. It this does appear... This is also the guy that catfished Wings. This guy catfished Wings a while back oh. and then posted all of their conversations. He, he posed as a woman who lived near Wings. And uh, <laughs> when, in, when in reality, he's a gentleman from Canada. Tremendous and, uh, time investment. Huge, huge. Like two months of catfishing. And then he posted all the screenshots and stuff of Wings. His frustration on his dreams around this time and a discovery that she was once again active on Plenty of Fish was enough information to piece together that the marriage was no longer taking place. With the trolls succeeding in sabotaging his marriage and the declining health of his grandmother, there was a sort of relapse. Yeah, I've been I've been going the opposite way in weight lately. I mean, like I've been eating like shit ever since like my like the trolls went and kind of fucked with my marriage and like got her family against me and like I've been trying to work deal with that mess and like, I don't know. I just I just been super depressed and unhappy. I mean, like my grandma got diagnosed with cancer. Trolls fuck with my marriage. They're trying to fuck with me on the taxes. I mean, just a bunch of little things. Like I got a I got a I got a fucking nail in one of my tires. I had to replace that. That's three hundred dollars I didn't want to spend. And like I just haven't been motivated to do anything lately. Like I just been sleeping a lot and just kind of like meandering through life. Though Jordy never stopped consuming fast food post surgery, there was a noticeable uptick in consumption of fast food and yoo-hoo's. Yoo-hoo's are in essence carbonated chocolate milk in a can. There was hardly a day with motivation to stray away from his former and now current eating patterns, as throughout March there were multiple instances that showcased an increase in his caloric intake, even stating that he had gained 10 pounds due to it. I'm actually around the same size, I, like, I, I, like the only thing different is like I don't, I, I'm just not been hiding it on the camera. Like I haven't really gained hardly any weight. I've gained a little bit. I have gained some weight back, but it's been like ten pounds. Like I'm actually around the same size. Like this is still a three X shirt. Can I show it? Uh, yeah, this is still a three X shirt. Like I'm not even in a four X anymore. Like these are, these are three X pants. Like I have clothes I can't even wear. To make matters worse, by the end of the month. He leaked his phone number again in the exact same fashion he did so last year, as through car gurus he was looking at trucks to purchase. But as bothersome as it may be, a phone number can be changed. The worsening issue that required change was still his weight gain. The surgery Jordy opted for was a gastric sleeve surgery, one that removes a significant portion of the stomach allowing only a small amount of food to be present at any given time. Eventually the stomach expands once more and the weight loss may plateau. It is not uncommon for those who get the surgery to gain all the weight back and then some. And for viewers, Jordy was certainly on that path. As due to the pandemic, Jordy had recently purchased a stockpile of food consisting of canned goods and ramen noodles. 
Individual portions of these are insignificant when considering how they may affect a person's weight. But how Jordy was eating voraciously, though he couldn't physically stomach large amounts of food at once, he could continuously eat throughout the day and eat small segmented portions that eventually equaled the large portion that was impossible to take on all at once. This being reflected by the common sight of him eating on stream. Though outside influences like his failed wedding could and was being used as an excuse for his reduced commitment to eat less. But that was no longer the case. It was two months. Two months of Jordy drinking Yoohoo's and eating on stream. The sight of such an activity welcomed the chat to use the Yoohoo emote as it was now a meme of sorts. Then, a picture of Jordy in formal wear began making the rounds through the internet. Then another. Sometime in late May 2020, Jordy and his wife-to-be went through the wedding, with the news of it going public mid-June. Alright. So we know I got a puppy, right? And I already have two cats and Bongo. Right? The reason we got the puppy is I got married. And so Kelly, Jordy's wife, and Bailey, the dog the couple adopted, was now attached to his life and story, and was brought to many viewers' attention in an equally chaotic fashion. Even for what is typical of his life, this was unexpected. Thank you very much. We are staying on top of some late breaking news overnight. Police say a man and a woman have been busy robbing businesses on the northwest side. Now, unfortunately for them, officers were also on the job and they managed to catch up with them. Katrina Weber live where the arrest happened, which is near Highway 151 in Petrenko. And you say it was a case of police being in the right place at the right time, Katrina. Well, that's right. Those officers just happened to be passing by this area at the time when the call came in about a robbery here around 4.30 this morning. Those officers were actually on their way to yet another robbery call out on Culebra Road near Loop 1604. That's when the robbery call here came in. They say they caught the couple in action, arresting a woman who was still inside this Texaco gas station store. A man tried to run, according to police, but they ran him down and caught him on the access road. They found the couple's car still in the parking lot. Police say that this couple robbed two other stores in the medical center area. And again, they've both been arrested and they face a long list of charges, included aggravated robbery. In those clips was Jordy Jordan and his wife Kelly. Kelly, who was now introduced to the online community through this video because that news report was about an actual robbery taking place at a gas station in San Antonio, Texas, while Jordy lives in South Carolina, there was no belief that this was legitimate. Beyond that was splice footage of what seems to be Jordy when he attended the FPS boot camp and the security camera footage that seems to be playing back on a monitor at the store but being recorded vertically with a phone. Jordy was not pleased with the fakery that is the splicing of these clips, nor the origin of him making that transaction. Um, I went to an Office Depot recently, and they took vid they took video. Uh, one of the employees took um security footage and stole it and took it home of me making a transaction, and then they edited it into a like news feed of a of like a gas station robbery so I'm currently currently looking for lawyers for a defamation suit against office depot that isn't legal defamation I mean like for somebody to have access to the security camera right they would have to be a manager or hire at least a key holder of Office Depot. That means that's one of their more trusted employees. He used Office Depot resources to get video footage of me and then used, then in his free time, to frame my character by pretending that I was stealing from stores. Uh, defamation, like the defamation part is them accusing me of stealing. Though Jordy said deformation and deframed, what he most likely meant was defamation, which can be defined as the action of damaging the good reputation of someone, slander or libel. 
It is rare for a defamation suit to be won and difficult of such winnings to be calculated, especially in Jordy's case as it's not damaging his good reputation per se, as he's already an infamous figure, and due to that would be ever more difficult to prove that this event heavily damaged his reputation. Even with this fakery taking place, it seems he was optimistic with varying facets of his life as seen on this stream on July 2020, a little over a week after that fake robbery scandal. I'm over here losing weight, married, happy as I could fucking be, new truck, house paid for, and, all, and the way you're trying to ruin my life is by charging back $3 that I don't even realize that's missing most of the time. Warm up while you can. We deploy Keep soon. doing you, pimp. It took only two weeks after this stream for him to have a change of heart and accept that he was feeding into old habits. I have lost weight. I've lost almost 140 pounds. But my goal weight was 250 and I didn't make that. And I've gained probably 20 pounds back since then. And like, I don't like where I'm at because I don't want to be going back up, but I am going back up and I'm struggling to change my eating habits. Being displeased, some of the more active and considerably disliked members of Jordy's trolling community used Jordy's weight gain and other unfavorable clips of him saying the n-word and controversial statements involving minors as a sort of justification to further tarnish Jordy's reputation to differing effect, with two notable events taking place in August of 2020. But the ones that targeted organizations and community members close to Jordy seemed to be more effective in getting his attention while also getting more opposition for taking it to that level. Uh, oh, we were talking about how deep the hate goes. Like, let me tell you exactly. Like, I, I understand I'm boring. I understand that I failed weight loss surgery. I understand that everybody's severely disappointed in me, right? But you guys take it too far. You take it too far. Let me give you an example of what they're doing to me right now. They're taking pictures that I put on my Twitter, right? And they're putting racist messages on them. And they're sending them to local Black Lives Matter groups in my area. Like they're getting into these groups on Facebook and then posting these pictures claiming that they're from other places in my other groups in my area. You laugh, this is stuff that will get you killed. While things were ramping up in terms of the harassment Jordy was receiving, they seemed to have died down again as he bared bad news that most members of his community, whether troll or regular viewer, could sympathize with. But she goes like, the, the nurse is supposed to be coming over to, to uh, clarify it, and they're going to be removing the body, and like, do you want to come over and see her one last time? I'm like... Ah oh, man, I don't is that I don't want to remember her in the shape she was in and that like I already got to remember her from last week cuz I went to see her because they told me like she wasn't doing very well and like yeah, she, she had cancer and like, she had lung cancer but like they um she couldn't like move her arms or her legs or anything like her like her nervous system was completely gone. But I got to remember that face. It's just like I'm selfish with death because like I don't want to go to her funeral. And I didn't want to go see her last week, but like I felt like I owed it to her because she was asking for me. There's two things I don't wish on anybody. I watch somebody slowly die from cirrhosis of the liver and to watch somebody die from cancer. Either one. Very good. Jordy's grandmother was someone who, while growing up, played a very large role in raising him. It made it all worse when he was in the unfortunate position of watching her deteriorate in hospice care. Though there were the usual comments and claims that Jordy was streaming for sympathy to encourage donations, in moments such as these, there was a rare community unification. A viewer even sent Jordy a painting in remembrance of his grandmother. Though this piece didn't last long. In November of 2020, the trolling resumed to its typical amount. As for a short period during this month, he was banned from Twitch and believes it was influenced by the trolls. 
Another event possibly involving them was when Jordy determined to purchase a scalped PS5 and driving two hours to pick it up turned out to be a waste of time. At least that's the way it seemed initially because about an hour later he still obtained the console. What drew viewers' attention in Jordy's streams after obtaining his new gaming console was in fact not the console but the shirt he was wearing. Insignificant at first glance, until viewers took note that this was one of the shirts Jordy wore pre-surgery, meaning that he's possibly close to, if not back to his original weight. Another recently discovered health-related issue was now his low levels of testosterone. My testosterone T is a 240, and the reference range is 264 to 916. Hey, stay frosty. And my testosterone free is 13.2. I don't know what that means. To make matters worse, the antidepressant Lexapro was supplemented with another known as Effexor that initially had a strong and pleasant impact, but it took only a few months for this to lose its effectiveness as well. With the weight gain, the newfound method of trolling Jordy by using Jordy's likeness, and the ineffectiveness of his antidepressants ended 2020 in a much different state than the year began. The silver lining was that there was a lack of interest, as there was some control in his life, and the trolls were not as present as they were, or at least, were going to be. With many troll channels across the spectrum recirculating compilations of Jordy's controversial statements about race, children, and now more frequently, his stories and video segments of alleged animal abuse. There are a few notable stories that Jordy has told specifically of cats, one directly on his channel when, allegedly, at the age of five, he trapped a kitten under a bucket and forgot to release it and only remembered about it years later. I was, I was outside, I was shooting basketball, and, um, you know, this cat comes along, and we had these five-gallon buckets. So I took a five-gallon bucket, and I was like, bloop! And um, I basically I, I left the bucket on top of him because the cat couldn't move the bucket, and he, uh, he ended up dying under there. Recently, there were other clips when, shifting his chair, he possibly run over his dog having it squeal, and in another clip he claims to shake his barking dog's cage, though the narrative around that is that he hit the cage. These moments range widely in time that they happened, but to new viewers it was all the same. So as 2021 progressed, the circulation of these moments increased ever so slightly, but they were finding difficulty in achieving their intended virality. That's not to say that they were not effective. Jordy managed to reinvigorate the wrong kind of interest in him, sourced from what he previously called being selfish with death, that gained attention for three reasons. First, that the event was re-uploaded by Sean Rinklin, the same creator that had not uploaded in well over a year. And this was to many enough for him to return from his hiatus. The video in question, uploaded on March 7, 2020, is titled Wings of Redemption ignores his crying wife for Dark Souls disaster stream. The video starts with Jordy stating that he is streaming before he leaves to attend a celebration of life, which can also be considered to be done alongside or in replacement of a funeral. And being that his grandmother passed about five months prior, it is believed to be her remembrance. I'm just trying to squeeze the stream in before I gotta go do the celebration of life thing. As the stream progressed, it is apparent Jordy made the last second choice not to attend and notifies his wife via text messages just moments before they were meant to leave. Yeah. Hey. How's baby? What's happening? Nothing. Nothing. I wanna talk to you. I'll, we'll talk when I'm done streaming. When will that be? I don't know. So you only just kind of wait around? I, I, I texted you and said that I wasn't going to the thing that yeah, you... Yeah, but you texted me 15 minutes before I should be getting ready. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Maybe that was a little late. Might have been. I don't know. Can you not take like a five minute break? No, because it it's going to be more than a five minute conversation. Failing to convince Jordy to go, she gets frustrated to the point of crying. <laughs> I'm good with you shutting me up.
whatever. So what are you doing, bud? Uh. Oh, All right, guys, I can hand the string. I'll see you guys in a bit. What they don't understand is my wife will cry at the change of bariatric pressure in the atmosphere. Though Jordy said bariatric, which can be defined as relating to or specializing in treatment of obesity, he most likely meant barometric pressure in the atmosphere as to say his wife is very sensitive and her crying in that moment did not mean much but it meant much to others, as reason number two for this getting such attention was of course his white crying, and reason number three was the alleged backing out of attending his grandmother's funeral. So for others, like the members of PKA, Jordy's excuses were hardly convincing. This is something that someone with, you know, like an anxiety kind of issue usually does, they'll, they'll ponder over it, stew over it, then last minute they're like, I can't do it, fuck it. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna oh, that's it. him, but that's, that's 100 percent him. He does this yeah. thing where like he's uh he's a real worrier and uh super pessimistic about things, like mm -hmm. like and if especially if it's something he doesn't want to do. Like Taylor was talking about how like the day before he's gonna like do a big workout, he's like making all these elaborate plans and mm -hmm. like 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 aiming high. And I think Wings sometimes does the opposite. He's like, oh if I do this, then all of these awful things can happen. Relationships, in their instability, tend to have even more pressure pressed on them than a typical non-public relationship. Any moment, captured live or otherwise, may be recycled and brought up at any point in the future as a demonstration in its strengths or failures. This period in time seemed to fuel the latter. Because exactly a month later to the date, the tables were turned and it was now Kelly receiving flack when a now-deleted video exposed her leaked flirtatious messages with some of Jordy's mods. It was soon after this that he reacted directly to the messages on stream, finding some messages harder to defend than others. The short and long of it is that Wing's wife had been carrying on sort of a flirty relationship with some of his moderators, his Twitch moderators, I suppose, Discord mm -hmm. in the Twitch yeah, moderator Discord. Discord that they have. And um, mm. like to the point where like they were driving together and she wouldn't show him her phone because she's like having like private conversation with one of his fucking mods. Like, oh, uh, you, boo, you know, I love you. This is right here is honest flirting. This again, honest flirting. This is one day after Valentine's Day. And I just bought her diamond earrings. Look at the dates. See, January 30th, uh, can we call you? This could be anybody adding the text here. This is when Joe Man came to visit us. And I don't know what they're trying to get around here and says yes. And he's like, tell That's me bizarre. who the fuck you're talking to. Tell me who, the, who, who this is so I can demod them. And she's like, well, how about I just leave the Discord? And then that way it's not an issue anymore. And... I guess he agreed to that. Even with these flirtatious messages laid out for the world to see, Jordy's marriage held, and Kelly stated that after this whole ordeal, she'd be wiser in the future. A future that for at least four months, from April to August, was mostly drama-free. The most notable thing that happened within this time was that Jordy lost his Twitch partnership for breaking the mysterious Exhibit D. On the content guidelines, this is a rule against certain types of promotions. But there was also word that Exhibit D was in reference to something specific to Jordy's contract. While he was still allowed to stream on the website, he lost his partnership status. This allowed him to stream on YouTube as normally partners are contracted to stream solely on Twitch. But Jordy claims that came at the cost of tens of thousands of dollars because he was making more on Twitch. 
During this time, there was continued frustration within the trolling community with Jordy maintaining his eating habits. This all relatively minor when compared to Jordy's past scandals. Though it's almost unnatural for him to go months on end without something major taking place. And that is what we call the calm before the storm. To provide context to what is about to happen, there seems to be an idea that Jordy, due to an endless wealth of clips online of him doing or saying things that may be considered controversial, that his streamers are packed with that frustration and that there is no effort not to feed the trolls. How it's actually like is that Jordy has a mostly passive chat that at times he plays into depending on his mood, and is more honest in accepting his past mistakes. Even when his chat is flooded with rhetorical questions of controversial events that would annoy any person, Jordy does make an effort to answer the more legitimate questions, though that doesn't entirely stop or discourage his more persistent viewers looking to get a rise from him. Other times, usually when Jordy is in a bad mood going into the streams, he'll more likely than not answer these troll-like questions which will induce more questions and so on. This is how you get the infamous Jordy disaster streams, where just a few minutes in time at his worst will result in months of circulation of this moment. The reason for him being in a bad mood was because police came to his house yet again. Not because of the typical swatter, but another form of impersonation trolling that we've seen in the past. This time it was played out a bit more aggressively and illegally. I was talking, I'm, I'm streaming now. Yeah, I want to talk about this bullshit. What was the police thing? Um, I had police show up to my fucking house an hour and a half ago, almost two hours ago, stating I was harassing somebody from fucking Missouri on TikTok. So the police, in, in their infinite glory, called me a liar and threatened to get a warrant for telecommunications harassment against me. So... I've made this little video. You look here, like, like this right here is, like, look at this shit. Like these trolls are making accounts key. on Coming TikTok and I fucking with people. My children. This is his profile. So if you guys can, please go report him. Go blow his. Like he's got like five videos here. He's got all these followers, which are almost fake, and he's got all my shit linked, right? Stuff up. This man is kidnapping children. But the reality is. We so like, we go to something else here. Like I scroll down here, this guy Sam get a job sent me stuff. So I'm like, I'm looking for all the stuff he sent me right here. Like here it is. I'm really like, fucking too. sick of this motherfucker. And like during my period as a as, as a delivery you driver, I started hating black people more and more. Read them. I'm really like fucking too. sick. This woman is the woman I think that's this is my car. claiming. This is a veteran okay. that that they were fighting Ten against. Years. The beginning of my social begins with a zero. Have Mr. World War II, that's younger than me, <clears throat> prove that. Have him do at this one. Show me your fucking ID card, because I know you don't have one. And like, I don't know who this woman is. I don't. I've never had TikTok. I've never touched TikTok or anything. This is what the cops showed up about. This woman made a police report. She felt like somebody was going to come to her house and fuck with her. Dog, I've had the cops called to my house four times in the last two months. I've had two for fucking Bongo, I've had this one, and I've had another one for fucking, like, Craigslist shit. What's a fucking lawyer gonna do? You act like I've never walked, talked to a lawyer before. They don't do shit. This did many things within Jordy's community. It did have the effect of building up some opposition to the worst parts of his trolling community, and it also brought attention to his years-old controversial statements that were being used largely by these TikTok impersonators. So with more attention being brought to Jordy, mimicking the attention he got pre-surgery and pre-Laxapro, his chat was a bit more active in the following streams. And with that came an increase of questions asking him about his previous controversial statements. So the mistake he made here was twofold. It was answering and feeding viewers that were most likely not genuinely asking questions, but looking to annoy Jordy, and this annoyance had him answer more and more. The second part of his mistake was though he no longer agrees with it and said he was saying it to be shocking several years back, he was trying to justify his previous statement on the age of consent. I made a point that the new generation of females are whores?
and that you have to be naive to think that girls, young girls, aren't already having sex. I did say the age of consent should be 12. You know why I said that? Because growing up in high school, I knew girls that were like 12, 13, 14, fucking on the regular. By addressing these things and trying to defend them, he brought more attention to the older clips he was talking about. Like when he played with a 17-year-old in Rainbow Six Siege and had a conversation with her which was a bit flirtatious. <laughs> Doc, it looks like you need some dick, son. Sure, Doc got plenty of dick, son. Gosh, damn. <laughs> Mr. Lijon, would you like to see the French croissant? What's up, hey, y'all might make fun of my 5XLT, but that's just more gas tank for the love machine. Ooh, I'd like that, Jordy. Mm-hmm. Jordy, your ass going to jail. <laughs> or the nearly 10-year-old clip from his time on PKA, dated at March 16th, 2013. If, like, if like a 16-year-old guy and a 16-year-old chick and they exchange naked pictures, that, that shouldn't be child Like, they're, they're children themselves. It would be weirder if they were like, oh, yeah, let me look at that. I understand no, if the guy's, like, 45 like, and she's weird. 16. But like even sixteen at forty five, that I I'd let that slide because a sixteen year old can make her own damn decisions. I'd cut child pornography off around twelve. I like the rules they have whoa, in Jersey whoa, and North whoa, Carolina. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, Where wait. would you cut child pornography off on? No, twelve. He, okay, he's he's differentiating between child and like sex offenders, you know, like a subset what? of sex oh, offenders. Oh, okay. So you're, not, so you're not saying that we should legalize... Yeah, like, no, 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 no. I'm saying, like, like, if you get... Okay, okay. I, I just had to make sure. <laughs> I had to make sure you weren't going to put the 13-year-old support I, I know a <laughs> buddy of mine. Normally, without the full context of Wings and his lack of eloquence, one might believe that Wings actually likes children. Though there are other moments where Wings has said just as unthought-out statements like his many claims of being shot at his various places of employment. I've been armed robbed three times and I've been shot. <laughs> to get a better picture and understanding of what some of you believe Wings to be, I set a poll on Twitter to ask whether you believe Wings actually likes children or if the narrative is just used more so as a vehicle for trolls. And these are the results. So it seems the majority of you, or just the 212 sample size that answered the poll, believe that Jordy, even with those clips out there, may consider them to be times he misspoke or are just examples of his lack of awareness or intelligence. But that may also be because many of the people who answered it are well aware of what kind of person Jordy is. Before we get into the storm and the chaos this caused for Jordy, we'll quickly cover the other significant things that happened in September. Like when sexting someone, what appears to be several years back, Jordy sent a picture of his genitalia that was now available for the internet to see. The same day of the leak, Jordy, but more importantly his wife, reacted to it being leaked with her teasing Jordy about it. How big do you think my penis is? Would you say it's more six inches? I don't know. Would you say it's the length of the water bottle? You could answer it. Mm, I don't know. How don't you know? You see it. <laughs> Do I? Mm hmm What? They're trying to say I got a small penis and you won't be, you you won't back <laughs> me up. Why are you worried about that? Who needs to care if you how big your penis is but your wife? That's mm -hmm. it. So why why worry about what they think? Mm-hmm. You do stupid things, make stupid choices, you deal with stupid Okay. She then proceeds to throw one of his infamous misspoken phrases back at him. I think you learned a valuable lesson, though. What? That Every dude said. Consequence has actions. All right, ban Raiden Ratari. Consequences have actions, pimp. There was also another stream where his wife approached him with what seems to be, after a doctor's appointment and having to deal with the anxiety of the possibility of her cancer coming back, she approaches Jordy on livestream and states that he isn't taking her doctor's appointment seriously enough. What you mad at me for? What is this kid texting you for? Tell unlimited UAV what it is. I don't think you're taking my doctor's appointment seriously enough. Who the hell is waiting for Wendy's? What do you mean? Like, I'm really scared about it. I don't even know what this muffler is. You haven't got bad news yet. There's no reason to worry about until there's bad news. 
You worry about everything else. And we'll deal with it. Drone has located a You're bomb. You're gonna be okay. We'll deal with it. Initially, it sounds like he's saying grow up and deal with it, though it may have been we'll deal with it as he reiterates a second time. If it was the former, it would be quite damning. And now for the chaos, or the uncontrollable mayhem that inhabited his streams from October until current day and why it is all connected to his impersonators on TikTok. As that was enough to get the police to come to his house and enough for him to be annoyed to the point where he talked about it on stream. On stream, he discussed his previous controversial statement on the age of consent. And with this fresh clip and the old one put together, someone ignorant of Jordy just by seeing these two clips could form a really bad opinion of him. Which brings us to October 2nd, 2021. User the Boulder and Brasher posted a 53 second long video on the subreddit I am a total piece of shit of those two clips put together. Conveniently zooming in on the second clip as to not show the PKA episode and its age, which again was PKA 125 uploaded on March 16th, 2013. As this was presumably many people's first introduction to Jordy, this post had an insane amount of traction and upvotes going up to around 54,000. On the opposite side of things, Jordy's response on the post got negative 8,829 downvotes, enough to place him on the top 30, maybe even 15 most downvoted comments on Reddit. This day boosted attention to my previous video as seen by a spike in views and no doubt had others interested in the rabbit hole that is Wings of Redemption. So striking while the iron is hot, another post on the same day and the same subreddit was uploaded with Jordy telling a joke involving race that got about one-tenth of the upvotes. Black controller and a white controller, because when the black one don't want to, don't want to work, the white one will. <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. The following day, a about 11 minute long video was uploaded to the subreddit that accumulated nearly 9,000 upvotes, documenting Jordy's statements and actions that can be taken as animal abuse. Most of these clips are stories that may have been lies, like the bucket cat story that we previously covered. There's also this very old clip of his dog Riley, a stray he took in. Hmm? What? Like he just laid down and pissed and shit all over the floor. Down, I'll check. Hey guys, mm. uh, Riley is laying on his side. He's vomited and he's laying down, pissing and shitting. He doesn't want to get up. Just to be sure that is the dog, right? Yes. I don't know who it is. He's a stray. We picked him up probably four or five months ago. I don't want to take him to the vet because if, if he goes to the vet and it's going to cost five or six hundred dollars, I'm going to have to put him down. We don't have rat poison in the house. He's vomiting and shitting, and that's not something that below it does. No. Did, uh, did he go outside at all? He goes, today? Out, he goes outside five or six times a day to use the bathroom. But yeah. He, but this just happened, like, when we was on the call. Like, when I started this call, he was perfectly healthy, laying on the couch, chewing his bone. What bothers most was not much what he did do, but rather his inaction or on wanting to get the dog immediate help. As much as these clips help to show the moments Jordy may have been negligent with animals, there is a sort of inflation with this compilation to build it up much larger than it actually is. The more damning clips of Jordy not acting with his dog having a seizure, running over or near his dog with a chair on accident, or attacking his barking dog's cage are placed in the beginning and are visibly, though not openly stated to be, year old clips. Also in this 11 minute long compilation, the majority of clips, or about 7 of the 11 minutes, are about the time he hit a deer on accident and showed no remorse, further explaining putting a dog down after it had been mangled to a presumably non-recoverable state by a raccoon, a several minute long section of him talking about treating his dog's heartworms, and stating, in another very old clip, how if he had to choose an animal, he would have sexual relations with a cow. 
So there is much of mixing and matching relevant and somewhat irrelevant clips to inflate the runtime and make it look much worse than it may be on a subreddit that has much of a reason to hate Jordy for the major post released the previous day. Not helping Jordy's situation was that during a stream shortly after this newfound attention, his wife argued that Jordy was saying the things related to children for shock value, and that he has changed over the past 11 years. But Jordy goes on to comment, specifically in reference to his wife defending him, quote unquote, that's a terrible take. I feel like the 12 year old comment, I've said this in this stream as well, was something he said when he was young, he was doing it as a shock doc value. He's matured now and understands that comment is not appropriate. It, it, that's a, that's a terrible take. Okay, um, that's my take. I don't want to talk about this, but I'll talk about it. First off, I'm not advocating underage sex, right? What I was advocating for is people getting child charges. It's not even called child anymore. It's called, what's it called? It's called like sex child splits of material or some shit like that. It's a much looser definition. Regardless, like when I was in, uh, when I was in school and I, I'm, I'm sure other people will see this as well. Like, Girls started hoeing around right around ninth grade. And you'd have dudes on their phones. And I, I remember back in the day, <clears throat> so like when toward the end of my high school reign, you'd have dudes with all kinds of like technically child phone. Because like every girl, but you, granted, we were the same age at that point, but like, I don't know. It's like, I don't advocate it now. But the, the idea was saying it was like, like some of these girls be hoeing around and like, some people, some girls will send that shit to you just to get you in trouble. Do I, do I think, no, I, I disagree with that statement, but the statement was said as a shock jock statement, but I'm trying to rationalize why it was said. What Jordy possibly means to say is that he's trying to put into question that in the past, that if these teens were sending explicit messages to each other, would it be fair to arrest them even if they were of the same age? But this contradicts the statement that he is directly referencing from several years ago that a 16-year-old and 45-year-old would be fine to be in a relationship. So the problem, for some, isn't entirely his unpopular comments. It's also that his stories don't seem to match up. Because what Kelly was saying was also true. Jordy claims he said many of those controversial things, not just about children, but with animals and his comments about race, to be shocking and not because he believed in them, so why would he have to defend them in any other capacity? His previous claims are too inconsistent, which takes credibility away from Jordy as he's shifting the narrative. This uncertainty and not laying out a clear picture to what his lies and current beliefs are attached to his long history of lies to build himself up as a person many knew he already wasn't will have those same people looking at Jordy in the worst way possible because his words mean very little. We'll further expand on this. In a stream also by the end of the year, Jordy claims that a Sunny V2 video released on him makes him out to be worse than he actually is. Hey nuclear man! How long are you gonna follow me? I don't know. So what caused you to start following me? Uh, I just watched Sunny BT's video on how much of a piece of shit you are, and I just decided, well, you know what? I'm gonna just let this guy, you know, know how much of a piece of shit he is to a lot of different people. Okay. Have you ever considered that Sunny B2's video might be biased? Because Sunny B2 doesn't do a whole lot of research into his videos. And he just takes other people's videos and compilates them together. But less than a minute later, admits to not viewing any video on him. I, I, I haven't watched Sonny's video or anybody else's. Then again, with a few seconds later with that admission, goes on to say that the only video on him that is somewhat close to accurate is the Down the Rabbit Hole video where he states even that had major portions wrong. Though he fails to mention what is wrong in these videos, but I know all, like, like the only one that's even somewhat close to, like, accurate is, like, the Down the Rabbit Hole video. And even then, that's, I don't know. There's huge, huge, like, issues that he gets entirely wrong in the video. Correct. <laughs> using 10 seconds clips out of context. Like, not, not only are they using clips out of context, they also, like, edit clips. So in that, he's saying that my video, released May 17th, 2019, is incorrect. And he's right. 
in my video are incorrect stories about Jordy being shot at his work, which didn't happen because it was a lie. Another thing I got wrong with my video in believing Jordy's lies is that he apparently never graduated high school. This is at the center of the problem. It's his habit of lying. I used to live on uh, Holt Gardens. It's a, it's a little subdivision, just like Section 8 housing. Out there on 378 and um, oh yeah, my mom used to have a Monte Carlo. And like I was coming home from school and this guy was like trying to jack the mother's car. And like um, he wasn't a very big, he was a, he was a kid mainly. And uh, I, thought, I, I screamed at him and he ran away and stuff and he ends up turning back and takes a shot at me, hits me in the leg. Wings, everyone's going to be bummed if you don't show off the bullet wound. <laughs> There's nothing to see there, dude. So the reason my video is in part incorrect is because Jordy is a liar, and a well-known one at that, even as of recently. As an example, let's take the story of when Jordy, at the alleged age of 5, trapped a cat underneath a bucket and due to not checking up on it, the cat passed away. When joining the Lion's Den, a Discord dedicated to Jordy that is not in his ownership, he is questioned about that story and says it never happened, and is one of the things he lied about. No, how about we go down memory lane? It's Since not. you said you're not a bad person. Okay, well, remember when you killed that cat and then you were talking I didn't to someone? Actually do that. That's a story that I, I said on PKA. So you didn't break a cat's neck or trap a cat under a bucket? Didn't do none of that. It was all shock value. All shock value. The same way as I didn't fuck a cow, I didn't get shot in the knee. I didn't go to Korea for StarCraft. Yeah. It was all stuff I made up when I was young to make myself seem more interesting. This conversation took place in 2021. Now let's go back two years prior to a two hour long conversation he had with Woody where he talks about that same story. I, I got another one. Yeah. You know the cat story where young wings, I'm going to call you yeah, seven years too. old, put a cat under a bucket and it died. That's true too. Is yeah. that story true? Yes. Oh, it was a kitten too, right? And I, did, I, I didn't realize it till like probably six years later. 2019 was a period that Jordy established what was and wasn't false about his statements. So back then, the story was true, as he said to Woody. But maybe he was lying up until October 2021 when prompted about the legitimacy of the story. But even then, a month after being thrown that question, in around November of 2021, now the cat story is once again true, but it was an accident. What's up, Imp Herd? You killed a cat by trapping it under the bucket, is that true? Dude, I didn't kill the cat on purpose. I'm not even gonna talk about that shit. Re regardless, as I say, I was like five years old. People keep leaving that part out. It is these inconsistencies that make it all the more difficult to believe any word that comes out of Jordy's mouth. Even if it did happen, he would have been five years of age, and something happening around that time may hardly reflect his current character. Regardless, lies like these are what help feed the trolls and strengthens their claims as it's not too difficult to take credibility away from Jordy, as that's something he does himself. Like his excuse for not quitting streaming and finding alternative employment is that the trolls will follow him to his new job, or that other jobs in his state pay worse than his streaming job. But what is likely the truth is it's Jordy's anxiety, and how difficult it may be to meld with a world he's not used to. Hey Wings, can you admit that part of the reason that you don't stop streaming is that you know you aren't accustomed to in real life since you stream so long? 100%. 100%. Like, I don't feel like I, I belong in the in the world outside. I mean, I, I know that sounds weird as hell, but like, I've been doing this for 14 years. And like, when you go outside and you live in the real world and you have to deal with people every day of the week, it makes you feel like you're an alien. Why this is such an important thing to focus on is that as much as Jordy tears himself down with inconsistencies, his worst trolls prove him right time after time again, as just one wink after being cancelled on Reddit, he lost his job from DoorDash as he discovered he was banned from the service. The reason given by the company was because they believe he was causing an unsafe environment involving claims of discrimination and or harassment. In a deleted tweet, Jordy believes it was because trolls were reporting him for recording information on how well people tipped. 
or it could have been this very old clip of Jordy presumably talking about his days as a pizza delivery driver. Black people don't tip. And like during my period as a, as, as a delivery driver, I started hating black people more and more. Jordy, now being banned from DoorDash, had closed one possibility for him to order food to his house. But that did not stop food from arriving in droves. It was, as it was before, called in and ordered by viewers and also encouraged by Jordy. The dude, whoever sent the chili, there's a big difference in sending chili yeah. and sending the cops. Okay? Just saying. Ch like, chili, that's trolling. That, I, that's shit I can get behind. That's not to say that there weren't issues. Sometimes the orders consisted of just a bun, or even worse, a salad without dressing. Watch, here it is right here. Bring your salad. In the trash. Dude, I didn't ask for DoorDash to begin with. And then on top of things, um, they sent me some, they sent me a salad without salad dressing and shit like that. Like, it's like get real. With Jordy's streaming times and Kelly's sleep schedule parallel to one another, when streaming, orders would come in at higher rates, which caused her to wake up not just from the knocking, but also from the dogs barking in reaction. So being fed up with it, she confronted Jordy and in order to appease Kelly, signs were pasted on his front door asking the delivery drivers to not knock. Here is a picture of that sign, along with hundreds, maybe even thousands, of shipping boxes presumably ordered by a troll. But cardboard boxes are not a threat. They are an annoyance. Heavily armed police officers responding to a call of an unwell man with a gun is a threat. As another swatting took place about a month after he was banned from DoorDash on November 9th, 2021, with the impersonations and false police reports increasing, it was apparent that those Reddit posts took on their intended effect, and the trolling of Jordy was maybe even more severe than he was getting pre-surgery. So this was clearly affecting Jordy's personal life, but it was also affecting trolls and clip channels alike, as doxing and harassment within their own communities levied at each other was a common sight, with channels such as Xbottle01 and Winx007 falling victim to that attack. Trolling can be as light as repeating a few of his popular phrases in his chat, or it can be as severe as sending the police to his house. Still, the worse the harassment, the more people will tend to leave the community for actions like hacking his PlayStation account. This action was enough to go Jordy to enter the lion's den once more in an attempt to get his account back as he assumed one of them is in possession of it. Still, according to his Twitter, he reobtained his account eight days later. That solved one issue for the time being, leaving other issues of increasing impersonation to get worse on all fronts. As now at the end of 2021, a time period where one might analyze their year to make notes on their improvements and failures, to many, Jordy was leaning heavily on one side. Dude, where, what is happening? Even Frederick Knudsen had something to say about Jordy's position. I wanted to circle back to Wings of Redemption. So when you were doing the down the rabbit hole on Wings, it's a it's a two hour video. So there was a lot that went into this. Did you go to his streams yeah. and watch live? Um, I did a little bit, but watching live did not really help terribly much, except to give mm -hmm. me a feeling of where he was at the time, uh, which is unfortunately a very different place from where he is now. Do you think he's in a worse or better place? Much now? worse. <laughs> Much worse. Okay. It only yeah, ever so, gets um, worse, man. These people so, never improve. For those, yeah. uh, they, sometimes they do. It's it's a tragedy because it is with, with Jordy. It wow. seems like he's getting better, and then things get worse. Knudsen provides the point that it appears that sometimes things are getting better, but they just get worse. Likely in reference to the increasing amount of trolling Jordy is receiving, paired with his failing weight loss surgery. But also true is sometimes things seem to be worse as they can be, only for things to get even worse. This represented well by the start of 2022. Though January lacked in drama, February seemed to be chunked full of it, due to new claims that seemed to be very damning on the surface level. These allegations towards Jordy are very different from the ones he is usually presented with, 
as to say where most claims against him are assumptions made about Jory by the various clips of him at his worst points which lack necessary testimonies of someone that might know Jory's activities outside of streaming. That testimony came in the form of Jordy's neighbor that truly was more so of a childhood friend to his brother as this person had notable grievances towards Jordy. With this increased attention around Jordy, this person reached out to one of the troll channels and offered insider knowledge about rumors that only those close to Jordy and his family would know about. Eager to know more, but also skeptical of this man's credibility, the trolls began an interview that lasted a little under two hours. But what was released on the channel Wingtings V4, that at this point has been banned for copyright abuse, were segments of the interview that sparked widespread interest in Jordy. Though as many people wanted the full context, the entire interview was released on February 19th, 2022. This is the section of that interview that gained large-scale attention. Yeah, so so you said you've known Jordy for like 30 years or something? Yeah, uh, pretty much his whole life. Yeah, I live right down the street from him. He only stays like uh, two roads over from me. The thing for me and what made me reach out, really, yeah. is the rumors about the... Because there was rumors going around through the family about sex, possible sexual assault on his sister. What, say it again, Wings? Don't feel the shame if you got a jerky shit to your sister. He had either said, he, I believe that he said something extremely inappropriate. And when he was called on it by when she confronted him about what he had said, he said that he didn't care what he said because what he said wasn't a fucking lie. And it was some fucking straight up inappropriate shit to be saying about your 13 year old sister but my mother who's his mother's best friend i'm assuming wouldn't tell me a lie about it. there was some editing and over dramatization in this clip that skews the viewer in terms of what these allegations are this clip makes it seem like the controversial thing that jordy did was getting caught pleasuring himself with an image of his sister but it was unknown what Jordy was being truly accused of as an actual retelling of what might have happened was not available in this clip. There was no true accusation levied towards Jordy, at least not a clear one. No doubt, Jordy was very much displeased with these new rumors about him, so it is believed that he contacted his neighbor and threatened to sue him for defamation. And that's possibly why his neighbor that we now know as Aaron released an apology. Hello? My name is Aaron, and I'd like to say that I'm doing this on my own accord. Everything that I said about Jordy and his family was lies. I lied through my teeth. It was wrong of me to do. I shouldn't have done it. I didn't hear any of the information from anybody else. It was all me. And I apologize. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry to Jordy and your family. I'm, I'm very sorry to everyone that's been hurt by these lies. I shouldn't have done it. It was wrong of me. I apologize. Very sincerely apologize. I did what I did and I said what I said. Unfortunately, I can't take back what I did. If I could, I would. But I'm sorry. I'm genuinely sorry. For any pain that I may have cost you guys. And did cost you guys. My mother didn't have anything to do with any of the shit that was said. I lied about all of it. I'm sorry. Every piece, single piece of it was a lie. And I don't even have a good explanation as to why I even did it. It's just, I just did. I'm sorry I lied. And hopefully Jordy and his family will forgive me. And if not, I understand. With these persisting rumors, Aaron the same day of the initial clip's release made an appearance on Jordy's live stream. For those of you who don't know there, I'm trying to nip this in the bud early. A video came out today that said some 
slanderous things. And it's got my whole family in an uproar because most of it's purity lies. And this is the guy that's going to be in the video. So we're going to play the video for you guys. Um, we're going to play the audio of the video, let you guys hear what's said. We're going to address this conversation. There was also the rare phone call from Jordy's mother, who at this point showed much anger towards Aaron. Can, you, hey, you're being recorded right now, Mama, so... No, I ain't talking to you. I ain't getting on that shit. I, I, he's right here. You gotta talk to him. I'm, I'm attempting to. All these lies to, needs to be straightened out right now. I'm attempting to. They, they clipped a whole bunch of things that were said over four hours out of context to make this video. Yeah, but I'm not getting trolled. I'm, not, I'm sick of this internet shit. I am too. I am okay. too. And I apologize. Okay. If this shit caused Tyler, anybody any Tyler's problems, I apologize. Get recorded. I want to let you know the that. Majority y'all, I mean, that come up between y'all, y'all need to tell it. We're, we are. So, Mom, right. well, I got you here. Out. Did, huh? did I move to my grandparents because I diddled Taylor? No. Yeah, no. Exactly. No. That's what I'm saying. They took all of this shit and clipped it out of context. Immediately, there seems to be inconsistencies. As Aaron, as we can tell by the clip, approached the trolls, but now is saying he did not agree to it, which is most likely in reference to consenting to being recorded. He also claims the interview was four hours long. They clipped a whole bunch of things that were said over four hours. But in the DMs with Jordy, Aaron says the conversation was three hours long. The interview was released a few days later, which clocks in about two hours long. So either Aaron was lying, or the trolls were selective in only showing two of the four hours. For the time being, we'll focus on his claims. As this stream proceeds, it becomes more apparent that either there was a massive miscommunication, the trolls manipulated footage, or Aaron was lying about what is being said. As he is now claiming when talking about Jordy's sister, he was stating that she was the victim of someone that was not Jordy. And when he was called on it by when she confronted him about what he had said, he said that he didn't care what he said right. because... Now, this was a completely different person I was talking about in the conversation. Because they were tr trying to br bring up that um, age of consent, and they knew that he had a younger sister, and they were trying to say all this stuff about him with this molesting his sister supposedly or whatever the hell they wanted to try and spin there and what I was talking about was another fellow that I know James that legitimately had problems with with much of Aaron's appearance on Jordy's live stream was him claiming the trolls tricked him into saying falsities about Jordy and saying that much of it was taken out of context but it becomes less believable that Aaron is reflecting honestly about what he said in the interview here is an example on Jordy's stream, he says this. This was a scenario brought up by them. They said, well, do you think that Wings' wife married him for his property or for his money or for this or for that or that he did the other? And I was spinning on what they were saying. I gave my hypothetical on the shit too. Like I said, it was in, it was in conversation. This shit shouldn't have been mally hacked and put on the freaking internet. Dumb shit, bro. In the interview, without any signs of coaxing, he says this. I'm trying to be funny with and and she's problems. heavy trolling on the dude. She's man. heavy trolling him, like all the time. I bumped into her at Walmart one time, and she went on a 20 minute tirade about how he's a fucking disgusting pig, and he he stinks, and when he sleeps, he fucking snores. How uncomfortable it is fucking living with the guy. Like, <laughs> like, why in the fuck are you married? I'd say that he, I'd say it's about mutual. I feel like the marriage was to get at each other, really. He also wants a little bit of a tax break because if he's married and his wife's there as a burden, he can claim more tax money. Yeah, oh yeah, all, he has to do is, all she has to do is do a basic nine to five for 25 hours and he can just penny piggyback off her health insurance. And you can tell throughout that whole entire thing that this shit was all flipped up together. Like I said, man, it's, when it when you hear it like this, put out there like this, I mean, what 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 am I supposed to say to this? I I can tell you right now, this clip is very convincing. That's why I, I jumped on this so quickly because, mm -hmm. like, I'm not a professional editor by any means, but I've been editing video for 14 right. years, 
But they got this. And light. I and I can hear video edits and audio and things mm-hmm. like that. And I, I only call two. Even Jordy further questions Aaron's legitimacy as he is constantly pinning this on the trolls. So why, why did you feel the need that, that to put words in my wife's mouth? Because she's upset at you too, right? So you had almost two minutes of my wife. Because the way the video states is that you met my wife by herself at Walmart, which is correct. Incorrect. I was with yeah, her. you were with us. And we talked a total of maybe a minute. Yeah, a minute and a half, yeah. And... There's mo- there's literally more time on this video of my wife telling you stuff than happened. Yeah, than, than exactly. actually the the exactly. then the conversation happened. So you've only met my wife less than a minute in less your life. Less than a minute. Yeah. Right. So like, I just want to put that well, on the table like, because like right, to so. kind of prove like all that was fabrication. After about 36 minutes, Aaron makes his closing statement and leaves. But this scandal wouldn't end here. There was still much suspicion about Aaron's change of heart and wonder what reason would Jordy's ex-neighbor would reach out to a Discord dedicated to trolling Jordy to spew nothing but lies. This came to a head on February 18th, 2022, when Jordy's PlayStation account was once again hacked, and in order to get it back, the trolls requested Jordy join their Discord. Here's the thing, they want me to go into Lion's Den tonight, they get my PlayStation account back first. About an hour and a half of trial and error, a verbal exchange between them began. Let's say like fucking minimum like 30 minutes to get your PlayStation account back. Okay, 30 minutes. All right, no, and, and you're not gonna leave if someone like says some question that like hurts feelings, yeah? Hey Siri, set say a say timer for 30 minutes. You can say I'm uncomfortable, I don't wanna answer that. Nobody here is saying anything racist, nothing like that. That's true. Some may address him as Jordy and attempt to reach him as a person. These are typically the minority of members speaking to Jordy. Others address Jordy as Richard or Sam, which immediately makes Jordy more defensive and more likely to dismiss anything they've said. This time around, Jordy had around 2,000 viewers on his live stream, when he normally gets around 300. The first round of questions had Jordy address some statements that he made the year prior, like the time he would said he would choose live streaming over his wife. Alright, I got a question. Well, it's more for both of you, but I'm wondering, what did you mean when you said that you would uh, leave Kelly before quitting streaming? I was getting hassled, like, by a bunch of people like I am currently, and I was, and you guys took it out of context. Well, here's the thing, right? I'm a 400-pound piece of shit, right? Like, (laughs) that's a fucking understatement. Yeah, keep going. And like, the only thing I bring to value on this planet is my ability to have stability. I pay my bills, pay my taxes, and that's, in my opinion, that's the only thing I bring to any value to anybody on the world. I have a very low self-esteem version of myself, and if I, if you take that part away from me, where like I have this, you know, where I, where I'm, where I have to rely on somebody else to pay bills, or I have to live off somebody else, I would have no self-worth whatsoever. As soon as the 30 minutes passed and the members of the Discord made it clear they did not have Jordy's account, he left the Discord. It's past the 30 yeah, minutes. Can I hang right. up now? Yeah, you go hang up. Okay. One person, a well-known one at that, was trying to get Jordy back in, communicating through the stream donations. No, I'm not joining the Troll Discord. We're going to do a different one. I'm not going to give them more content. If I'm going to give content, you're getting it. Not them. After a little persuading, Jordy hopped back in, with the only two others with their microphones on being Keemstar and Tipster. Hello! Howdy. Hello! Alright, what do we want to talk about? Keemstar throughout this conversation with Jordy is attempting to get him to embrace the trolls, as they are a large source of the attention he gets. But Jordy rebuts this because he has, at times, typically in a better mood, embraced them. But he fears if the trolling gets accepted, it would also get worse. Worse like more visits from his local SWAT team. Regardless, Keem was able to find a sort of middle ground. I'm sure someone has said this to you. Definition of insanity is trying to do the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different outcome. I want to put a challenge on you to not block anyone. Let anybody say anything in the chat. You know, if they break YouTube's rules by saying something racist or something like that, of course you have to block them, right? Mm -hmm. But for someone coming in hating on you, 
talking crap about you, making fun of you, right? No block. Let people get have it you, out of the system. Have you ever seen my chat without any of the any, any of the guides on it? It's a mess. You can't even. It's not. Even, you can't even consider it chat no more. It's just a moving blur of wall words. I just don't get it, Wings. A around the name Wings of Redemption is a fucking circus. Why are you not monetizing the circus? It makes no goddamn sense. Hmm. It has been a bit inconsistent, with Jordy at times turning subscriber mode on, but for the most part, it seems that he's taking Keem's advice to some extent. It is important to note that there were other things discussed in the conversation between Keem and Jordy, like the topic at hand with the allegations Aaron laid out. But it just, man, something just doesn't seem right because there is no reason for this person to do this. There's there's no clout gained. There's no financial benefit. There is nothing. He even says in this video, I had no reason to lie. I just did it, and I'm sorry. I don't even have a reason. Like, that is the most puzzling thing about all of this, him saying that over so, and over again. Well, his mother even said he was lying. My mother, I pulled my mother in on the video and asked her some of the questions, and she goes, she said he was lying. I've disputed some of the things he said, and they were all lies. Like, he had little truths hidden throughout, but, like, the big stuff were all lies. Like, it was just, that's just what it is. This scandal involving Aaron's claims came to a rather fast conclusion, because the following day, on February 19th, 2022, the full two-hour-long interview, as mentioned prior, was released, which gave a clear image and hurts Aaron's legitimacy in the way Jordy was saying. And we can break that down right now. So talking about the SA someone within the Jordy family committed starts around the 6 minute mark. This is the section released that everyone was familiar with. But now with the full interview out there, we can figure out what Jordy allegedly did. But not so immediately. As Aaron teases and also refuses to say what this wild accusation was as his mother wouldn't even tell him about it but somehow he knows it anyway. Nobody confirms or denies what, what the real reason behind it was, but my mother, who's his mother's best friend, I'm assuming wouldn't tell me a lie about it. What did, what was said? Do you know what was said? Like, could you just repeat it, like, just this once? No. My mother said that it wasn't something that she felt comfortable even saying. And he said that to his sister? Supposedly. It takes him a little over an hour and a half for him to get back to the thing that Jordy allegedly did to his sister. Would you, would you, I mean, you can, I mean, obviously, you know, if you don't want to, you can say no and, you know, I'm not going to hassle you about it. But would you think if you asked your mom today, hey mom, you know, just out of curiosity around this time, do you think she would tell you? This entire drama, many were listening in on and curious to know about a damning allegation levied towards Jordy, was boiled down to a possible point in time when Jordy commented, in a distasteful manner, about his sister's body odor due to her period. Her anatomy and, uh, and odor, if what the rumor is true. So he said that, uh... that she that because she was experiencing her time of the month that she stunk and that he could smell it and that that's what that's uh like dogs and heat or something and his mom i guess the sister told the mom about it and then it and the sabrina went to him and asked him and he was like well well women do stink whenever they have that and blah blah, blah and you know, that's a natural thing. I don't know what the fucking deal is or what the big deal is. Like, no, dude, you know, it's it, the big deal is that it was fucking inappropriate for you to say about your sister. When the community got wind of what this accusation was, things settled down rather quickly. Yeah. Wings is being accused of doing something sexual to his sister by a longtime family friend. Someone Wings has known in real life is accusing Wings of this, saying that uh, through hearsay, mind you, he's saying that he heard this, that, and the other, that Wings did something to his sister, and, and that's why all these other little things fell into place. And so it's like brought up this huge thing, <clears throat> and so Wings is like, bullshit, bro. 
come to my house, sit next to me in a fucking chair and answer for what you said about me on the internet to these people. <clears throat> what, what it really seems like is Wings used to like bully this guy as a kid or something like that. Or maybe when they worked at Domino's together, because they worked together as like teenagers at a Domino's for like a good period of time. These guys know each other. So they they were friends this guy, for a while. Okay. Yes. Sorry, yeah. And this grown ass man approached like, you know, the investigators from the internet is like, like spamming their inboxes on, on, um, discord with these paragraphs of like hey i'm this guy i know this about wings and that about wings and i know i grew up with him and and i know his brother and i know what his a sister, fucking and I, loser like he's and, and and like finally he says something like and i know something no one knows about his sister and it's that moment where they Whoa. stop ignoring him and the guy desperate for attention willing to say the anything. guy who's desperate for attention and, and like trying to hurt wings i guess for some reason says this and 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 so that gets their attention right they're like all right wait what the fuck and so mm -hmm. for, for four hours, they sit and have a recorded conversation with this guy where they told him it was being recorded. Mind you, don't let him fuck, fucking slip out of that one either. Um, here's what happened. Wings at one point, being the uncouth motherfucker he is, <laughs> said to his sister, hey, you've got some feminine odor that you need to take care of. That hurt her feelings. She told the mom. The mom was like, hey, you can't say that. And he's like, we're all living here together and it smells. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. That I is mean... the. That is it. That is it. With this video coming to a close, we'll focus on the status of Jordy. When we began this update video, he was on a weight loss journey and on antidepressants that help regulate his outburst. Well, he was fulfilling his wishes to the point that even the largest channel dedicated to him lost interest. Though there was a quick scare at losing his fiancée, now turned wife, he relapsed and fast-tracked his weight gain. Even after the marriage, he continued down this road with his consumption of food increasing as the days passed. This is not to shun Jordy or focus on his lack of commitment, but to show how damaging it is for him to feed into his vices. One thing triggers another, and he finds himself unable to escape a series of events that has him doing little but pitying his situation. Trolls, whether true or not, use this as an excuse to further harass him, as they feel an entitlement due to donating towards the surgery but not seeing promising results. Though for viewers not so invested, it can equally hurt. Because many people want Jordy to improve on himself and live a more fulfilling life. They want a testimony. I sort of hope that people, even when they feel they are at their worst, can improve. And they can, but Jordy seems to have a hard time in doing so. Instead, he is stuck in a loop of doing better and getting much worse. Probably a claustrophobic situation to be in, but definitely a claustrophobic, as to say anxiety-inducing, thing to watch. Though what he does have is a culture. A following that has not just a few lines of dialogue or memes that are specific to a typical content creator. He has entire channels dedicated to his every comment and item of food he consumes, with nearly all of it having certain constants, as it originates from the same man with the same squeaky chair and the exact same room time after time. <laughs>